Man, the fighting game fandom just can't chill out, man. Like, couldn't y'all have just chilled out until like freaking November with this? <laughs> I got a review copy of Blazing Strike. I got picked to take part in the Rage of the Dragons closed beta. And on top of that, I got a whole bunch of other indie fighting games that I want to cover specifically this month, if that isn't already a big hint at what I'm hinting at. But I saw this mess spring up on my feed thanks to a friend of mine reposting Roof, and not to mention I've seen some other posts. Now for the record, these people that are saying this stuff, I don't dislike them. In case you don't know, when it comes to me on this channel, when it comes to discussing and debating or whatnot, there's nothing wrong with that. My whole thing is this, and I'm kind of adopting something from another content creator that I watch. Challenge and attack the idea, not the person. Okay, that's what I'm doing here. I am still a fan of Rufalmonger and Fighting Games Daily, okay? So there's no beef here. If you think that's what this is getting at, get off this video because I don't have time for it. Also, if you're wondering why am I using Rumbleverse footage for this particular video, well, for one, I miss Rumbleverse. Number two, it is somewhat relevant to this topic at hand if you look at the title. And number three, I love Rumbleverse. End of story. So, let's get to the matter at hand here. So ever since Dragon Ball Z Sparking Zero came out and I've seen a lot of people enjoying it, ever since the game came out, apparently it's been selling really well, which has also caused some people in the fighting game fandom to talk about how this game is not a real fighting game or not a fighting game despite the fact they will say it's a fighting game somehow. <laughs> And as I'm showing off just some Rumbleverse footage, and again, I missed that game. I remember Rumbleverse had got nominated for a Best Fighting Game Award. I forgot by who, I'll throw it up on the screen. And I remember some people even talking about how even that game is not a fighting game. Now, as much as I love that game, at least with Rumbleverse, here's how I would put it. Because I never really called Rumbleverse a fighting game in the same vein as like, the traditional stuff and believe me we're going to get back to the whole traditional thing but i always said that it's a brawler battle royale that has a strong fighting game flavor a lot of the same elements that are key to fighting games whether it's combos knowing what moves are safe and unsafe spatial awareness or just spacing i guess it's spatial awareness like in a brawler battle royale because in addition to knowing what move will hit from what range, you have to be mindful of things like getting third partied, which not really that much of a thing in fighting games, but whatever. But I've always just said that this game had a strong fighting game flavor to it. Now for the record, just to kind of kneecap myself here, I dropped this video some years ago where we saw that Sifu got a best fighting game nomination. And I even said there that Rumbleverse was more deserving of that nomination than even it. And that's not again to say that Sifu is a bad game, it absolutely isn't. But what was funny to me was the category far as like genres are concerned that I thought that Sifu was much more of a fit for, it was actually nominated there, action game. It's more of an action because I don't think there's a beat em up category. Last time I checked. If I'm wrong, I'll throw it on the board. I'll throw up corrections for myself, but anyways, while you see the title where I ask a question that I do want to hear you answer and give your reasoning for, I do want to ask and also make a statement. First thing, let me ask you this. What is the fighting game fandom's problem with games that are not traditional fighters? What is this obsession with labeling them as not real fighting games or not fighting games? What is up with that? That's the first thing, I'll get back to that. But number two, in case you're wondering what my stance is on this whole thing, this real fighting game discussion, topic, debate, whatever you wanna call it, it's very stupid to me. It's very stupid and it needs to die out, but I know how these things go, it's never gonna go anywhere. Just to give you my personal take and my experience when it comes to the non-traditional fighters, whether it be these arena fighters, whether it be platform fighters, I've played these games before and overall they're kind of a mixed bag for me. There are those that I like, there are those that I don't. But for the most part with that genre I really don't gravitate towards either of them to be honest. I mean there are some platform fighters, like the last platform fighter that really caught my attention big time was Rushdown Revolt. That was really just that. 
And just something of a little semi-spoiler about a future video, I actually tried out this one battle royale platform fighter called Bite Breakers. And when I tried it, it was actually pretty interesting, though of course seeing that the mode that was available to us last time I checked was a team mode, I think I might have enjoyed it a little bit more if I actually was able to play with one of my friends though. Sure you could like link up with people that were in the discord for it, but I just kind of had trouble with that. Maybe I should have said more of anything, but regardless, I do think it's a very interesting idea having a platform fighter with all these different power ups. Like the most interesting one to me that I found funny was if you acquired this one item and you crouch down with your character, you'll basically disguise yourself as like an item, like an actual consumable item that somebody could pick up and it like confuses people. Like I found that to be pretty good actually. And I think maybe I'm just kind of starving for any type of hybrid of battle royales and fighting games after Rumbleverse shut down. But yeah, I found myself interested in Bite Breakers and I might, you know, revisit it sometime in the future. I'll probably never play Dragon Ball Z Sparking Zero. Do I think it's a bad game? No, it just doesn't really get my attention personally, but people are having fun with it from what I've seen, close friends of mine and other people, and quite frankly, that's cool with me. Long as people are having fun and they're not getting ripped off and the company's not just sitting on their hands while a game has glaring issues or whatnot, then I'm happy, I'm happy for them. But going back to my question again, what? is this obsession with labeling arena fighters, platform fighters, anything that is not the usual stuff that we think of when it comes to versus fighting games, what is this obsession with labeling them as not real fighting games? What is up with this? Now before someone says, well they're not traditional fighters, there's a difference between saying a traditional fighting game and a real fighting game. Maybe I'm being a little too pedantic here, but when y'all talk about realness in this case, like real fighting games or whatnot, the use of real is basically challenging the credibility of something. That's how I see it. It's one thing when you say something is traditional and then you wanna talk about this other stuff which is unorthodox, non-traditional, whatever it might be. Because of course we know when it comes to most of the big name, common, most mainstream fighting games, the most common format we've seen, the traditional stuff, 2D, 2.5D, 3D, that's what we see. Sure, this stuff on the other side here, like the unorthodox stuff, your arena fighters, your platform fighters, like sure, those games are unorthodox, they're not really the typical thing that you think of when it comes to fighting games, but I still look at them as fighting games. And some people will be like, well, you know, I just don't like those types of games, I like traditional fighters. That's completely fine. But do you have to just take your dislike of something and make it more important than it actually is? You can dislike something without discrediting it. You know what I'm saying? So many people will look at the arena fighters and the platform fighters and anything that's not traditional as something deficient. These games are not deficient. They're just different. That's it, they're just different. Now I do understand that this might have been fueled by a Dragon Ball Sparking Zero account on Twitter. Like not an official one, it's more like a fan community account that basically bragged about the fact that the game had beaten Tekken 8 and Street Fighter 6 for a fighting game's first day highest concurrent player count. To which I say, cool. No sarcasm or underhandedness attached. I'm glad that it's really booming like it is right now. Again, I'll never play it because I'm not really into those types of games. But hey, as long as people are enjoying it, companies not being stupid or anything, and people are not getting ripped off, good. But you know what I just noticed, and I'm doing this all off the cuff, honestly. But you wanna know what I've noticed when it comes to this? Cause I just thought about another instance where a non-traditional fighting game got some type of accolade of some sort. And whenever that happens, people will come in to try to discredit them. Like with Sparking Zero, this is all over the fact that it is beaten Tekken 8 and Street Fighter 6, two traditional fighters, for a fighting game's first highest day concurrent player count. This reminds me of when Watch Mojo had declared Smash the number one fighting game of all time, and instantly out of nowhere, Smash is not a fighting game, Smash is not a fighting game, Smash is not a fighting game. There is just this jealousy that stems from just seeing these types of fighting games actually getting more accolades or 
whatever it might be, praise, prestige over the traditional stuff, and I don't get it. I quite frankly wouldn't care that much to where I'm trying to discredit it. I really don't get it. Like, I feel like y'all have forgotten how intimidating the fighting game genre is to a casual gamer. Like, some of y'all have just been in the bubble of fighting games for so long, especially if you are a competitive player, that you've forgotten how intimidating these games are to someone who isn't nearly at your level. The casuals are going to flock to the Sparking Zeros and, of course, the Smash Bros. And not to mention, it's not just the fact that these games are more casual friendly compared to most traditional fighters, even with the inclusions of things like modern controls. But of course, you look at Smash and you look at Dragon Ball Z, they both have highly recognizable IPs involved. Mario and Goku are more widely known to the general audience than Ryu and Kazuya. So of course, generally speaking, more of the general audience is going to flock to them. I just still don't get this obsession with having to discredit these games just because on one front they outdid the traditional fighters. I just don't get it. Like this reminds me of just how people were so upset about the fact that KOF 15 lost the game award to freaking multiverses. I voted for KOF 15 before that award show came, but I peeped the game and figured that multiverses was going to win. Beta or not, I knew that that particular audience, and I discussed this with my friend Vault on my podcast, Jeff Keighley's audience when it comes to the game awards leans casual, and that game was definitely going to be one that the casuals were going to flock to more. But all in all, regardless, my whole thing is, even though Multiverses won that award, it didn't make me care more about Multiverses much at all. KOF 15 losing didn't make me dislike it anymore. Like, it doesn't matter. I also don't feel the need to discredit Multiverses as a fighting game because of that. Again, the whole thing to me is just really stupid. And I think it's just kind of like an eye roll for me because I'm a 90s baby and this kind of reminds me of when New Metal got really big and there were so many metal purists that said that New Metal wasn't real metal. That's what this kind of reminds me of. It's almost like it's a trope at this point. As far as I'm concerned, King of Fighters, Street Fighter, Tekken, traditional fighters are fighting games, and so are the unorthodox games. I know there's a little bit more contention when it comes to like boxing games, and I mean like realistic boxing games, which are usually aligned with sports games. I mean, I can kind of get that, but again, although these games are more realistic than most traditional fighters, a lot of the same principles still apply to these boxing games. And I'm not really a fan of those games much either, to be honest. I like the more cartoonish boxing games, of course. Whether it's Ready to Rumble, whether it's Black and Bruise, bonus points if you remember that. But yeah, I'm just kind of over this purity contest when it comes to what is a fighting game, what's a real fighting game. If you want to say traditional fighter, then that's cool. Like, we've always dealt with these different things in so many different forms. I gave the music example earlier. It's like you have traditional classic rock and then you have alternative rock. What's wrong with the fact we have traditional fighters and those that are not traditional, those that are unorthodox? I don't care if I like the game or if I don't like the game, if I'm good at the game, if I'm not good at it, as long as it follows the formula of what we know to be fighting games, and I'm talking about in the video game term, not this BS where people take the dictionary definition of fighting and try to make that argument about Call of Duty by that logic is a fighting game. No, you know what I'm talking about. Going back to how I said Rumbleverse has a fighting game flavor to it, even though I would not call it a fighting game myself. Like the one thing that keeps Rumbleverse far away from the fighting game label, at least in my opinion, is the fact that the primary gameplay, the main modes that you play involves it being you, versus a multitude of opponents at the very same time, aka a battle royale. It's just the combat where that fighting game flavor then comes in. Whereas with most traditional fighters, it's usually 1v1, you get a tag game, it could be 2v2, 3v3, things like that. The concept of neutral, whiff punishing, combos, blocking, counterplaying, and of course, a lot of the terms that we're familiar with, pressure, spacing, footsies, all these things right here, plus a lot more, are the recipe for a fighting game. And I don't care, again, whether it's a 3D, 
whether it's 2D, 2.5D, arena, platformer, long as there is enough ingredients to satisfy the formula of a fighting game, I consider it a fighting game regardless of how I feel about it personally. Once again, I want to emphasize that this is no hate towards Rufelmonger, no hate towards FGC Daily, and no hate towards anybody that may dislike these unorthodox, non-traditional games. I'll say it again, if you just don't like non-traditional fighters, whether it's because maybe you feel like the combos are too easy and maybe that might be why you don't like modern controls in some mainstream fighting games because it might be the influence of those games coming over seeing how those games attract casuals a lot more. I get disliking it, but I do not think that is grounds for disqualifying them or discrediting them as fighting games. That's all. But as another one of my favorite YouTubers would say, that's just me though. What do you think? Feel free to comment below, discuss, and debate it with other people here, but keep it classy like Dudley. And until the next video, I will catch you all later. Y'all take care of yourselves, be safe out there, be cool to each other, and stay hydrated. See ya. Thank you.